Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV studio today. We're going to be making glass boxes. That's right, Barb. And this particular box is the box we're making in the video. So make sure you watch the video and join us as we roll through this project, making the box with Miss Mary, Barb, and myself. Along with this box, you can make other boxes, such as this box here. This is a beautiful little box. Actually, this is Barbara's box that I made for her 33 years ago. It's still here. Now, this is a box here. This particular box, you can even make larger boxes. This is a Bible box. This is a box you can not only keep a book in, but you can also keep the book in it. And this is, this is a box that was made by my father, who is deceased now. And uh, we keep it in the house on our dresser. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you. This is, you know, once you learn the process of applying the hinges and do the math on the sides and the bottom, you can build any box, any size that you prefer. So after the premiere of the video, you're going to be able to download this particular lid for free for 24 hours. After that, we're going to include three more patterns for box lids, and you're going to be able to purchase those and support the RDRV channel by your purchase. Let's get in. Let's get in. I'm ready, Barb. Okay, let's go. So we made a lid for our box, and you can see there's three hearts in it. And the hearts actually extend beyond the lid because this number two, this top heart here, this is actually how you actually would open the lid on the box itself. So your your box is going to start out with a four inch by six inch square mirror, rectangular mirror, which is this right here, huh? So we have, that's our box. That is our bottom to our box. So now we're gonna do everything that we need to do to prepare the mirror to be copper foiled and soldered, and which includes after sanding the mirror bar, we wanna take the clear fingernail polish right. and put, put around, around it. it. But first thing we're talking about is the pattern. Now you can take any four by six box and go by this pattern because it tells you the length of the sides and the length of the ends. And that, but what you wanna do is your lid, you can start out with a rectangle, drawing your lid from a six and one quarter inch by four and one quarter inch block, and then draw your lid, draw your pattern on top of that. And if it hangs over, like I was saying, Barb, on our pattern, if it hangs outside this line a little bit, that's great. But I want you to notice that in my design, your hinges go right here. And I have brought this heart down into the hinge because I need some stability there to hold it together and mm -hmm. to keep the lid because the lid is act, you know, it's actuated, it's moving up and down. And then I have another one right here and that's gonna be attached to the hinge as well, so. Okay, but what if you wanted to put the hinge on the other side so that the box opened that way? How would you do that? You would just turn it upside down. But I mean, could you still? No, you'd have to reverse the pattern. Okay, you can't put right. the hinge back here. This okay. is, I draw it specifically with a straight line on the back edge because remember, you want to flip the lid up. This is okay. going to cause confrontation with the rest of the box. Okay, got it. Okay, so yeah, that's a good question though because I was just you know because if you lift the box if you lift the box up like this, uh -huh. first thing it's going to do is catch the bottom of that heart and it's only going to stand up 90 degrees, which is going to allow it to fall down and break. Okay. Okay. So anything hanging over should be in the front or the side, not along the back where the hinge floats. Okay. Okay. All right. And then you have another pattern here. Yeah, it's just like. a simple pattern. So it's hearts of, inside of hearts. All of the patterns have two one and a half by six inch sides. Right. Two one and a half by four and a quarter inch sides and one four by six mirror. Very and our, our typical way that we're gonna start this box lid, because this is, you know, this is really what we're working on right now. So I like to take my box lid and I like to cover it with contact paper. So the contact paper, what this is gonna do is it's gonna make your pattern very rigid. And then we're gonna take this, and I know some of this is gonna be edited, but you know what? You really need to know, <laughs> uh, probably all of it's gonna be edited, but you need to know that this is one way for you to have to stop having to make patterns all the time. Once you cut this out, 
This pattern can go into an envelope and can be used, you know, multiple times. I'm gonna use two razor blades stuck together. It's gonna to eliminate my lines. It's gonna give me great control over shapes and straight edges because I can use my straight edge to get it. So what do you think, Laura? I think you're ready. Are we ready to cut this out? Cut out the pattern and let's cut out the flag. Okay. Let's That's an interesting cut. You got an outside curve and an inside curve. I do. So, so you're just going to trace that right onto the Right onto the pattern. We'll put our number on it. And now, you know, I always, always like to whittle it down a little bit. So we're going to take our square. Remember, keeping the same amount of pressure start to finish makes the glass break correctly. So we want to stay inside the black line because that's our pattern. Right. Okay, so the pattern is our black line. You know, just like anything, we're going to have to grind this a little bit anyway. But, okay. um, yeah, so if we'll take our pattern here, we'll put that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Right, right? there, just like that. Okay. So we're going to work on number four here. And then the number two right here, we're gonna do that one, and that's gonna require us to get some inside cut. We're gonna do that in a pink, I think, and I think I have a pink over there. So anyway, this is a white, and it actually has a texture to it. I'm not sure that you can see that, but it is so pretty. So remember, stay inside your black line. <laughs> Our dog is in the background. She wants to join us. That's okay, Miss Mary is doing really well after her treatment the other day. Mm -hmm. And we're really proud of her. So we're just gonna, you know, these little curves here, you're not gonna get them all out because everything goes to its weakest point. But you know what, we're gonna take the time to grind this, it's gonna take just a second. Because really, when you think about it, we have a couple of little flares to take off. But that's about it, Barb. Yeah, it's pretty good. So let's do this. Let's eliminate this, that line right there, okay? So you can get your pliers So I can there. get my pliers in here. There we awesome. go. Awesome. And pull that. See how that came out? Boom, just like that. So guys, it, it sometimes it requires you to eliminate a little bit more glass than you would like to, to get closer to the cut. But go ahead and do it because this will allow you to do your cuts correctly. So this is our number two in our box here. I want you to notice it's got a pretty good inside curve here. It's got some outside curves because again, it's another heart. So here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna whittle this down because we don't need that much glass hanging out while we're trying to make something work for it. So the first thing we're going to do is start down here. And remember, if you drive into a hole, drive out of it. Okay, so we're going to eliminate a lot of this. Two scores, everybody. Two scores. One on the outside to eliminate the glass. And now we're just going to pop that out and pop that out. So now our curves are right on the money. Now, why do you do that cut first? I just felt like it would be difficult? easier. Yeah, and that, that way, see, if this broke, then I could erase this and start and move that heart over. I got you. Okay, so I'd like to take the most difficult cut first and see what happens. Right, right, right. So now we're going to cut the rest of this heart out. And you can hear I'm driving into some pretty nasty... Divots. Divots there. And I'm sorry that my hand's in the way, but I'm turning the glass. And now we're going to eliminate this. And we're going to eliminate that. And we're going to eliminate that. So let's just pop these off real quick. Change pliers. Okay. Yeah, and I want to remind everyone that we have some shorts on cutting hearts. Uh, in our videos if people want to just 
put those on and watch them while they're trying to cut the the uh, well, parts you know, out. Well, that they probably should, Bar, because you know that that's or, really going to help them. Or they could put them. this on while they're working on it. Yeah, just put this on, and this will show you. You know, this will tell you. Just listen to it. It'll do it anything that you want, y'all. You know? So we're just going to clean this up with the grinder. We're going to finish cutting out the rest of our pieces, which we have four more to go to make our box. And this is going to be quite pretty. So everybody knows how to grind in copper foil, but one thing I do want to explain to you when you're building a box and we're doing a mirror in the bottom, first thing you have to do after you sand the edges of the mirror, I want you to take clear fingernail polish and go all the way around the edge on the back of the mirror, allow it to dry, and then foil everything. You want to sand the front just to knock the sharp off of it. And then do your clear fingernail polish. Yeah, don't out. put it on the grinder. Yeah, don't put your mirror on the grinder. Okay, so Please. what's the next step? All right, so the next step for all of this, Barb, uh -huh. is it has to be tinned. Okay. It's a very simple process. We're going to tin everything. Boom. So they know what tinning is. But yeah, you know, that is an important step in this box. So you tin all the edges. Yes, I would all of it. tin all the edges. You're not beating anything. You're tinning. All your parts and pieces, except the top. Right. You this know. is for the, the base of the box. Yeah. Don't leave any little bubbles or burrs because everything from here on out has to fit flush and correctly. So we're going to make sure we tin all of this. You don't beat it up here. Don't beat it up. You're flat. Tinning. You're flat tinning, everyone. Flat tinning. Okay. Boom. Now you see I'm holding it between my fingers because I don't want any hot solder dripping on me. It's a silver, but if you if you touch this with your iron, look, it just scratches that paint ever so slightly. And it doesn't take much at all. You can kind of, there it is. You can kind of see that right there. Mm -hmm. And so once you scratch the paint off down to the silver, yeah, you your mirror is ruined, it. okay? So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab another piece of glass. Now, y'all, I use this really special glass. Because this is a confetti streamer mm -hmm. made by Bullseye. Yeah, that's pretty. And, and it's, you use black back foil on this? Yes, I use black back foil on this. And this, because it's red and white and pink, we're gonna definitely black patina it. Mm -hmm. And this pretty. box is gonna jump out and grab you and give you a big kiss. That's how pretty it's gonna be. So again, here we go. We're gonna take our tinning. We're doing our tinning, everybody. So I like to do this with my solder when I'm working by myself. I just like to make me a little man there. And we're gonna continue to tin all of this. All right. So now we've got everything tinned on our box. We've got our four sides. Right. Our bottom. And so now we're ready to stick the box together. So I want to I want to show you a close up of how the box goes together. On the bottom, you want to you want to create this V here, which means you want to put your bring your glass up halfway up on the mirror, and then tack solder it in the corner. And we're going to do the same thing all the way around. And I'm going to just I'm going to set that I'm going to put a little piece of glass under the corner, and that's going to set everything up level. Okay. Okay. So the, the so my my ends hang over an eighth of an inch on each side because our box goes into it like that. Right. The long side goes inside. Okay. Okay. So it's like that. Okay. Tip it up a little bit. Okay. The other way. So we're gonna show that where this comes down. Hang on. I'm sorry. This comes down and sits right on top of that, just like that, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, because we're, we're starting this process. So what I'm gonna do, the first thing we have to do is do a little bit of flux, and we're just gonna tack these corners together, right there, just like that. So to finish the box, it re you have a lot of, you still have a lot of work to do, but now that you've got it all stuck together, you're in good shape. So, 
and you can see that around the bottom we have this V. And that's going to make it really easy to solder because we're going to set it like kind of on an angle to where that, that is straight, Barb. And we're going to be able to solder that without any problem to fill in, to do that V right there, just like that. Okay. Okay. So, Barb, you know, not only do you, can you solder this like this, you can put feet on the bottom of your box. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many things that you can do once you reach a certain point in your box. Mm -hmm. So if you were making, you know, like 10 boxes doing a show, you would go ahead and do all, just make your boxes. Yeah, kind of set up like a little assembly line, I think, Barb. Be crazy. All right, so another thing that's important when you're doing your box, once you have it to this point, you need to round the entire top because this is the finished edge right here. Okay, but so what I wanted to just share with them is you're just gonna you're gonna do that. See that touch and go. And what that does when you do it is it not only goes on the top, but because your pieces are tinned, it extends itself around to the edge, and you have this beautiful. Feel that edge right there, Barb. Mm -hmm. Feel how round it is? So mm -hmm. we want this to be just like that. So what I'm using, because it's a very simple method for this process, is the touch and go. So the other thing that this does is it brings everything up to the same height in case you're off just a little bit. So I want, on the end, I want you to see this edge here because this is going to give us a nice area in order to attach our hinge to. So we're going to we're going to take that and we're going to solder that right up just like that. So now we're using the Heco iron on their temperature on their dial at 360, which is Celsius. So keep that in mind. Still a little bit hot for me, um, but you know what? It seems to be working really well, Barb. Now you can imagine why we put the clear fingernail polish on this. You see the flux going on this thing? Well, you know what? It's gonna help us because it, it's not gonna allow the flux acid to eat the silver off the back. This little 3 16 wide tip on the end of this Heiko iron is sweet, Barbara. It's very sweet and I like it. Okay, so now you can see it's not wobbling, it's not moving, it's not wiggling, we got it level. And that's important. All right. Again, y'all, when you're soldering, if you give the solder time to melt, you can go right back and bead that right up. Look at it. We're gonna, we're gonna run a small bead just around the inside real quick. It's not gonna take much time. And we're just gonna do that. All we're gonna wanna do is just put a bead on the inside, just like this right here. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and tack soldered our lid together, okay? So let's get this put together, right? Mm -hmm. Tin the whole lid and then we're gonna solder it. So now we have our lid together, Barb, and, but we didn't bead up this back edge because we're gonna attach the hinge here mm -hmm. and then we'll bead it up once we attach the hinge. So the box will sit on here just like that. So our hinges are a two-part brass hinge. The smaller one fits. And we have an uh, entire video on how to attach the hinge Oh, to we the do, box. that's right, yeah. Uh -huh. So this hinge, this fits inside of here and this is what operates the hinge. Uh -huh. so Barb's going to put some gloves on and uh, that'll keep her from getting to burnt just in case. 
<laughs> to protect the innocent. I'm telling you. All right, let's push down. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's it's not my goal to burn Barbara, but it's it's definitely my goal to get this hinge placement on no there correctly. The cost. <laughs> but I, I'm not trying to burn Barbara, I promise you that. That's, I just burnt myself. We'll so, but did y'all feel that? Did y'all feel that? Uh, I saw it. You it saw was, it, but it you didn't. didn't actually leave a mark or a burn or anything, did it? Oh, yeah. It turned the skin white. Oh, okay. It's just a little burn, though, okay. so it really doesn't. Better you than me. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have any pull. We don't have any stress on the hinges, so everything seems to be working just fine. We've soldered, we've tinned, we put the box together, we've tinned the lid and we've uh, and soldered it, and now we've applied our hinges. And the next thing we're gonna do before we do anything, definitely before we uh, attach the box lid chain, we're gonna clean this box thoroughly with baking soda and water. It's off now because she's not in any danger of being burned by me or anyone else for that matter. So yeah, we're gonna, gonna go rinse your box off. Oh, okay. Well that, you know, that's another reason she's taking her gloves off. She's gonna go rinse my box lid off for me. She's taking the gloves off now. I'm taking the gloves <laughs> off. You better believe it. Are you done? Okay, go ahead. So you see what we're using here. This is our trusted Novacan. Black patina, and you know, when you use baking soda and clean these boxes, I can't wait for you to see how just, this is gonna turn jet black, and then I'm gonna show you how to measure for your chain, for your box lid, we're gonna attach it, and everything here is looking good, I think. Don't you, Barb? I think so. It's looking great. I want, do you see the difference in the box just from cleaning it with baking soda? It's still wet in the box. So anyway, this is what we got, y'all. Look how, just look how shiny the solder is. And all Barb's done to this is wash it. That's it. We, so you could just leave it like that if sure you Sure like you could. It. But Why the not? only thing is it has black, black, black foil. foil. Right. And so that might make it look weird. But so because yeah. we're going to, we've we've used black back foil. And okay. oh, look at that, y'all. Jet black. <laughs> Jet black. See, you know? And oh my gosh, look at the red. Look at the cranberries. Pop at you, baby. It's popping. So let's get some more patina on, okay? And you can use a brush. It's today, I just happen to have some paper towels in my hand, and this is what we're using. Okay, so you can use a brush. The paper towels will uh, make your patina go further. That's for sure, I think. If you don't clean your box or you don't clean anything without with baking soda, it's not going to look like this, is it, Laura? Nope. Now, if you've taken the time to bead the edges up correctly, this this what is what makes the box, y'all, is to make it so that everything is beaded and round. And just take the time to do that. I like it. I like it a lot. So what we're gonna typically what I like to do, I've already got my chain cut, but let me show you how I got to that point. There's 12 the yards. Gone, so yeah, the label's say. gone. But this is a small chrome jewel chain, jewelry box chain. It's very small. You don't need anything real heavy uh, because it's just gonna not look good in the box. So what I like to do is just hold the chain up like this. Okay. And then I, I'm, I get the angle that I want and I'm gonna attach our jewelry box chain right there. Okay. So what we're gonna do is the, the box chain gets mounted in this bottom corner here at that angle right there, just like that. I'm gonna stick it in that corner, okay, just like that. So yeah, so, you know, mix your glasses up, do some crazy things and let it, you know, you can let your glass hang over the side because what does this do? This gives you a a way to open the box, right, Mark? That's right. And this is our pattern. And so um, this will be on the website, and along with four other box tops. Okay. And the bottom of the box is all the same. Or they're all the you know the same dimensions as this, and the top. <clears throat> but each design you can do whatever you want, and you can make your own designs too. Yeah, but once you have the basics of the box, 
it's on then for you. It's really on. So you can change these boxes up in any way that you want. Again, make sure that you put, you need something down here coming into the back edge along this so that you have something solid. This makes the hinge very rigid and it won't come off unless you pull it off. So, so you can go to the website at conwayglass.com and go to the shop page and the pattern will be on the website. And it'll be free for 24 hours. And these sizes are real important. So this is the magic, the size. Yeah, we're, we're, we're here at the, RD, at the Conway Glass Studios today, sharing with you for the RDRV Glass Studio channel, how to make a box. So thanks again for tuning in to the RDRV Glass Studio channel, because I'm Ed, and I'm Barb, and, and we're, we're the, the Streeters. streeters.